Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft 2 replay, this time on Cloud Kingdom, featuring I Bleed Orange in the top right corner playing the red Zerg. In your bottom left, you've got the blue Terran, Vanchen. Uh, both players are master level. I know uh, I Bleed Orange is 40 master and Vanchen's a little bit higher. Not by much though. Red versus blue tells me that this is probably a ladder match, not you know, between two friends or anything like that. So the stakes are on the line, and we're going to see some good play out of them. Vanshin making sure that I Bleed Orange, uh, I guess, isn't on one of those placement matches. Maybe he didn't have enough time to check on his opponent. Um, I always like that, how you can kind of double check to see just how fantastic your opponent is going to be. You know what else is fantastic is this map. Daybreak is really cool. Got a small ramp leading down to the natural. Uh, natural is pretty easy to take and hold because you have only one place to defend even though it's a la rather large wall off. Uh, another place that you could consider walling off is here, the ramp but that leads you exposed to the pathway to the third, which is very exposed because there's two different ways into it and that does not have any destructible rocks. The destructible rocks kind of adds a dynamic flair to this map making it so that depending on if you want to uh, stress surrounds if you're zerg, you can take out the rocks if you want to keep it so that you can make a choke out of this area if you're Terran. Um, you can keep it in place and kind of incorporate it into your build. Hopefully this uh, matchup goes on long enough that we can see that sort of thing. The rush distance between the two maps is not the shortest that you've ever seen, but it's definitely on the more medium side. Orange is taking advantage of that fact by throwing down hatch first. No spawning pool, no gas out of him yet at all. Uh, and it looks like Vanchin is saving up money. He's almost at 400 right now. And with an SCV down on the ramp, it looks like he's preparing to take his own expansion. Single Rax is up. Uh, the wall off is not complete for Vanchin. But again, if he's thinking of taking that expansion with this SCV, that's exactly what you'd expect to see out of him. I bleed orange from what he scouted. Feels comfortable enough to throw down a spawning pool right now. Uh, rather delayed. It was like a 15, 16 pool. I guess delayed isn't exactly the correct term for it, uh, just slower. With that hatchery out, uh, you can expect it to be slower. It's because he's not really expecting a, a lot of pressure, a single marine coming out, but that marine's going to show up at his front door about the same time the spawning pool pops. So, yeah, it's going to be able to do a little bit damage to the hatchery, but it's not going to be able to pressure the actual probe line, which is where the real damage would be. We can see that I believe Orange is quickly approaching that critical mass of uh, drones that he needs at this expansion to ensure that he's got uh, the perfect amount of saturation. And he's got a little bit of a lead on Vanchen. Vanchen has that orbital command, so the uh, the lead's going to be minimal. The Marine is poking at the front door and with a bunker coming down, but with only a single Marine there, he's not going to be able to uh, kite well enough to do any real damage. One drone does go down, so I guess that is a little bit of damage, but we can look at the production tab and see that two queens and two zerglings are on the way and two have already popped out. Those zerglings are going to clean up what the drones have already stopped. The uh, bunker rush failed. Uh, the marine got pushed back, or the SCV got pushed back, the marine got taken down, and the bunker goes down as well. Both queens pop out at pretty much the exact same time. Very helpful to a zerg player. It allows them to uh, kind of match up their pro injects, or the larva injects which makes it so that a, uh, a player doesn't have to spend as much time macroing. Two more queen coming out with the uh, buff to the queens. Queens have become a lot more resilient and useful in uh, defense of ground-based play. So it's pretty common to see that many queens. What's not as common is to see two gas taken out with uh, as little tech as Vanshin was fielding at the time. A factory is on the way with a reactor, and the proximity to the factory to the reactor means that they're going to switch out, and we're probably going to see some uh, Hellion ground play. Nice harass on this uh, map. It basically lends this map lends itself to taking a third pretty early on, and with that third coming out, those Hellions are going to be able to harass in multiple locations. Uh, speaking of harassment, we've got some Zergling doing no real damage, but uh, the wall is starting to be built for Vanshin kind of walling off this whole section, making it so the Zergling run-bys are going to get harder and harder. At the same time, he's preparing to do a run-by of his own with that factory switching off for the reactor. We can see a bunker was placed on the low ground. This is really great. It uh, kind of 
makes it so that if the Zergling player wants to harass this orbital command, it has to be done within range of the bunker. It might be able to do some harassment up here with some roaches, taking out the refinery, preventing mining from these three mineral patches. But real damage, if it's going to be done, has to be done within range of the bunker. So it's a nice location. Um, I prefer it a little bit more a field, just because it prevents any damage at all, but it also makes it incredibly more exposed, uh, less tucked away. See a starport is on the way and it's pretty close to a tech lab. It'd be interesting to see if they're going to switch out or that tech lab simply positioned for it. Oh, they are going to switch out. Uh, I was hoping that tech lab was there for a more macro style play with the, the stem upgrade, the, uh, the combat shields, but it appears it's going to be cloaking done for banshees, which one's on the way. So these two hellions uh, and two more on the way are going to do just a little bit more aggression. I bleed orange had opted for uh, more queen uh, a better saturation at his main and natural rather than grabbing a greedy third like is the you know that's that's the normal right now is to go for three bases on this type of map but it looks like that it has given him an unforeseen advantage those hellions aren't going to be able to do nearly as much damage especially because he's got multiple queens flirting around the uh, creep preventing those hellions from being able to skirt in however those queens are going to be more exposed if more than one banshee decides to attack at one time and we can see that the first banshee is out and the second banshee is on the way the hellions haven't been able to pay for themselves but maybe these banshees are going to have a little bit more luck multiple zerglings are already on the field and more are coming out uh, hellions are doing a pretty good job of keeping the creep contained but it's already i bleed orange has already done a good job of spreading it to the point where uh even if the hellions own oh, that queen's going to go down even if those hellions succeed in keeping the uh the creep back a little bit the creeps already moved far enough afield that it's very advantageous to i bleed orange uh zerglings without speed aren't going to be able to get the the surround on these hellions that they need to in order to take them down however the queen's going to be throwing her needles and slowly those hellion numbers are going to get whittled down that banshee does decide to cloak takes a lot of damage from some of the queens but in its turn allows the hellions to sneak in and roast some of those drones a lot of drones go down Almost, uh, yeah, it gives Vanchen the advantage in uh, Harvesters for just a second until multiple drones pop out to saturate that third. Right now, both the third and the uh, natural aren't fully saturated, but even the minor saturation that he has on both is giving him the advantage to the two base Terran. This wall is rather flimsy. Uh, these supply depots are going to be very vulnerable to any Banshee her or uh, Baneling Harash that might come out of I Bleed Orange. We can see level 1 ground, level 1 armor are both coming out, which is going to lend uh, I Bleed Orange more towards Zergling and Fester and uh, eventually Ultralisks and away towards the uh, Hydralisk Rotor that I seem to favor on this type of matchup. Orbital Command with another CC. It looks like uh, Vanchen's preparing to take a third, relying on a lot of harassment in this matchup. Two different Banelings moving in, but the Spine Crawler is going down rather than the Spore, which is going to have enough time to burrow itself. Once it does burrow, it's going to provide uh, detection for these five, or no, six Queens, which are going to take down one of the Banshees and severely damage the other one. Again, the Spore Crawler is going to reposition. These drones had better get out of there. There's a lot of economic damage. How many? Six, seven kills? Six kills on the uh, Banshee. And again, the Harvester count's pretty much even with the Mineral count heavily in the uh, Terran favor. But we do see that the gas for I Bleed Orange is slowly beginning to stockpile up. What is he planning? What tech path is he going to go down next? I expect to see a Spire out of him shortly. With the uh, airplay that's coming out of Vanshee, the Spire's going to be nice. A couple Mutas. We'll be able to uh, keep the pressure on those Banshees, deny them the harassment that they need, and also give I Bleed Orange the uh, ability to harass Terran, which seems to be turtling at the moment. Uh, so other options that could come out of I Bleed Orange, you could double down on the upgrades. Right now we've got level 2, level 2 coming out uh, for I Bleed Orange, and a lot of Infestors. Maybe some of those Infestors come out with uh, Burrow. We can see some 4 Infestor Hip Squad. Really, he's got the uh, entire tech tree open to him. He could choose multiple different pathways to bring the fight to Vanshin, but one thing or another, that fight has to go to Vanshin. Uh, I Bleed Orange can't stay defensive like this for very much longer without giving Vanshin the the opportunity to get this third up uh, and once that is a hundred percent up and running once this wall off is complete completed um, he's gonna have a very hard time 
breaking it down. Something that he does have going for him is that this wall right here is completely exposed. You can do a Zergling run by and come in and attack the SCVs from the opposite direction. Right now, Vanshin has his army there, but that's also a plus. He's going to have uh, just a couple of Marines and two siege tanks sieged uh, in the way. This is an awful lot of Zerglings, and they should be able to do quite a bit of damage to that standing army. Right now, the standing army of Vanshin uh, is only 34 Marines to 5 siege tanks, and even though I Bleed Orange doesn't have that impressive an army on the field right now, he's got the money, he's got the units, um, and we have seven infestors coming out now that the pathogen glands is finished. So that army is looking incredibly intimidating right now. And uh, I feel like I Bleed Orange needs to do some aggression. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's moving all these Zerglings in. It looks like the wall was getting started by Vanshin, but uh, I think there's a, yeah, there is a gap right there. Those Zerglings are going to slip right through. Uh, it looks like because the siege tanks were positioned there, he wants to pull back. It was only a handful of siege tanks, but as he continued down, the spread was very good. He was just going to run into more and more opposition. He couldn't really swing left because of all the Marines. So uh, I think that was the right decision. Speaking of right decisions, we have a Spire coming up in the main. Uh, a Spire is an excellent choice. It allows the Zerg to kind of harass Turtling Terran uh, with multiple expansions. Uh, it allows the uh, Mutalists to swing right in and deal a lot of economic damage. It's going to be a very smart choice, especially because all the gas that's saved up right now doesn't seem to be being spent. And uh, the uh, ability to spin that gas, the ability to harass the Terrans, is really going to come in handy for I Bleed Orange. So what is Vanshin teching towards? He's got a lot of tanks out, he's got a lot of uh, factories cranking out, or having the ability to, to crank out those tanks. It looks like he's working towards that uh, critical marine siege tank ball. He doesn't have a lot of medevacs, but uh, the damage that's being dealt from the siege tank should be able to offset the, the cost effectiveness of this army. Uh, the Marines are going to go down pretty quickly if some Banelings were on the field, but as we see, there's really only Zerglings. There's a lot of Zerglings, and those Zerglings, if they catch this Siege Tank line unprepared, is going to do a, quite a bit of damage. But uh, the Banelings are really what's needed to deal with the mass of uh, Marines. 75 Marines is intimidating by any stretch of the imagination, even if it's outnumbered by Zerglings. I feel like Banelings uh, will be a better answer. Infestors are a fantastic choice also. Their uh, fungal growths are going to be able to do quite a bit of AoE damage on the clumped up Marines. Uh, it'll really come down to Vanshin's ability to split his units up so that they don't take damage from the fungal growths. And I Bleed Orange's ability to pick his engagement uh, to make sure that when he chooses to engage, he has a favorable position. And he knows what position that is because he had those two Zerglings uh, burrowed right there. Excellent fungal growths go down gets pretty much every unit. The Zerglings pretty much melt away, but are quickly replenished, and uh, I don't believe any infestors went down in that engagement. Sure, a lot of Marines are survived. They're being healed up by the medevacs, uh, but with the drones being pulled away, only the Queen and some of the structures here are going to go down, and we can see that uh, I Bleed Orange is elected to take a fourth or a fifth in the top left corner. So the damage done in this economy really isn't that severe. The Harvester count is still sky high for both players. The income for both uh, minerals and gas is very, very high. So I Bleed Orange really didn't take too much damage from that attack. Yes, it was successful in that it achieved its objective for Vanshin, but it was unsuccessful because so many units went down and Vanshin did not uh, maintain his ability to press. And unfortunately, he gave I Bleed Orange enough time to get up quite a lot of Broodlords, which are going to be able to rain destructive. Uh, destruction down on the Marines. Broodlords are an excellent choice for this map because there's so many straight lines, uh, so many high grounds and low grounds which prevent the Marines from stemming and getting underneath those Broodlords. If the engagement uh, angle is good enough for I Bleed Orange, he should be able to engage those Marines without any damage or risk to his Broodlords and that's exactly what's happening right here. They're up almost behind that ridge throwing down so many uh, Broodlings and uh, hitting that siege line with the marines unable to engage effectively. Fungal growths coming down, preventing that stem run-in to get them underneath the uh, broodlords. They're doing so much damage. The uh, unit resources lost is evening out, which is terrible for the Terran. You definitely want to see Zerg, uh, nat just naturally, the Zerg fall behind in that unit's lost tab. But uh, 
even if they're even if they're winning, they sometimes fall behind. And with the Terran neck and neck with Zerg, that's just a bad sign. That's a sign that the uh, Terran is in drier straits because Zerg is up on five bases and Terran is only on four. Uh, it appears that they've taken a planetary fortress at the same time that they pushed out, which is a great sign. We can see down here so many s command centers all being morphed into orbital commands, or some many of them being morphed into orbital commands, which is a great idea because that planetary is not capable of throwing down those mules, and uh, you generally lose some of the economic edge that you'd expect from uh, taking bases because you don't have the ability to... Uh, throw out those mules again the brood lords attack with a good angle up on the hill uh the they kind of overextend just a little bit exposing themselves to the marine who charge in one or two brood lords are going to go down looks like the infestors aren't fungal growthing as much as they need to there's a good fungal growth right there uh, so the rest of the marines are going to go down forcing this back and again the units lost tab is now favoring uh the zerg now we see some Vikings coming out, four Vikings coming out, uh, and without Corruptors on the field, we can see zero Corruptors are on the field right now, and these Broodlords really have no air defense against the Vikings. They're slowly going to go down. Uh, they realize their days are numbered. They're going to push down towards this planetary fortress, but we can see that instead of opting to take multiple... Uh, I saw that a greater spire was being built, and I was wondering if I missed a drop up in the main. But no, there's uh, there's just two greater spires coming up. I guess that's just protection against those against a drop. Maybe he's afraid that there's going to be a drop. I don't know. Five ultralisks on the way. It looks like uh, I bleed orange is teching away from broodlords, and he's just getting ultralisks, which is a great play. Ultralisks are very powerful, but only if they're supported by units. Right now, pure ultralisks not as good. You need Zerglings in there, Roaches, something else. Uh, Infestor's not the best. Coming in uh, with some good fungal growths, but these uh, in Ultralisks are going to get pushed back because they just weren't supported. Four Infestors are sitting there just waiting to be noticed so that they can get kicked out. Uh, hopefully, I Bleed Orange decides to pull them back, but it looks like a rally point is what's sending them up there. Multiple Infestors coming in. I expect, uh, oh, 50 Zerglings, excellent. 50 Zerglings are coming out, some beautiful fungal growths right at the choke. These Ultralisks coming in, doing the AoE damage that they need to do, but you can see them getting uh, focused down by the Thors, by the Z Marines. Uh, it's very, very important that uh, they're supported by these Zerglings. You can see how much more effective they are. 3-3 three, three coming up on the Zerglings, and that also benefits the Ultralisks. We can see that uh, it's also 3-3 three, three on both players, so you can expect that at this time, you know, it's, it's so late in the game. But uh, denying this third or fourth is a big win for I Bleed Orange. Um, it'll depend on if he notices the fifth down here. If he can deny that, I don't think it's feasible for him to push in and take the third. The main's already mined out, but the second is barely uh, mining multiple ones. Looks like uh, some Vikings came up here to do some harassment, but they were repelled. Some good spine crawlers were in position. The Vikings landing, coming up to the high ground to start doing some damage to the drones. At the same time, I bleed orange has noticed the planetary fortress in the bottom right, takes that down. So all of a sudden, Vanchin is down on only one or two mining bases, and his uh, mineral income is severely low due to a large loss in his harvesters. At the same time, I bleed orange can afford to lose one or two bases because he's uh, his economy is just so strong right now constantly able to revamp he's deciding to take back the skies doing a level two flyer upgrade but with the uh, four corruptors on the way corruptors are going to be pretty good against these vikings you're going to need a couple more to in order to take them out completely some investors poking at the door looking around for some uh uh detection it doesn't appear to be any in that area these investors instead are going to push back and uh wait around oh excuse me there were three ravens right there uh ravens of course are mobile detection i don't know what came over me it was probably because i'm stupid i don't know so the corruptors are going to go down infestors are going to go down ultra the are going to go down uh, a very key win for vanchin right there allowing him to take back the expansion but uh unfortunately his bottom right is still missing Despite the orbital commands being there, he's just not comfortable enough to push out and take that again. Another tech switch coming out of I Bleed Orange. This is one of the uh, one of the most powerful uh, aspects of Zerg is that it's very reactionary. Depending on what you see out of your opponent, 
You can switch back and forth between blue lords and ultralisks or roaches and hydras and zerglings and infestors. As long as that tech uh, remains up, as long as you can deny the drop play that Terran loves, the drop play that can take out so many fragile uh, tech buildings, as long as you can keep your economy up, you can switch between whatever build is going to best benefit you. And right now, the build that's benefiting I Bleed Orange is having just a hodgepodge of different units. Ultras, Infestors, Broodlords, some Corruptors. Uh, he's, he's got a huge and diverse unit mixture right now, and that's going to do very well against uh, the primarily ground-based units that Vanchin is fielding. Only a handful of... Uh, oh. There's, mo there's a lot of Vikings in there. I didn't notice those Vikings at all. I can see like three and there's eight in there. They're stealth Vikings. They uh, they can cloak. So uh, it looks like even 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 forces are coming out of uh, the gate on both of them. Even supplies. Uh, it looks like I Bleed Orange is taking another uh, expansion in the top right. At the same time, Vanchin, if you can look at the mini-map, there's a small... I don't want to take the eyes off of this engagement because some beautiful fungal growths happened. I'm very thankful I didn't look away. Uh, but there is a drop going on in the top left corner. It's going to get pushed back by the spire or spines and uh, queens in that area. At the same time, it looks like Vanchin has lost this engagement down on the common ground. But he successfully stunted the aggression that was coming out of I Bleed Orange. Uh, a couple of marines are left. They uh, decide to take out the extractor rather than push up in the main. If they do push up into the main base, they're going to meet two spine crawlers and a queen. Um, at the same time, just a couple of brood lords are throwing down some brood leans to poke at this front. Not a planetary here anymore, just an orbital. Very exposed to this sort of harassment. Very weak. Uh, very weak Vikings are going to come in, but uh, unfortunately, all the corruptors have gone down, so the Broodlords fall very quickly, and we're back to Zergling and Fester for I Bleed Orange. I Bleed Orange is going to go back to the uh, Zergling and Fester mix. He's getting multiple Infestors coming out. Again, that's going to allow him to harass, continually harass his opponent. Uh, unfortunately for Vanchin, he's not able to take this bottom right fourth because the creep spread has already spread over that area and there's also a burrowed zergling there so uh he's feeling very very cramped right now doesn't have the income to support the type of body uh the type of army mix that he needs in order to get back into this game so he's gonna have to rely on kind of commando tactics uh which really doesn't benefit him he needs to take out multiple bases he needs to take out this army he needs to deal with this major push coming from a I bleed orange. I really feel like he's just in an impossible situation here. Uh, and after this huge loss to these uh, fungal growths, after uh, after the damage is done by these infested Terrans, I think uh, Vanchin, the reality is going to sit in for Vanchin that uh, despite the loss of this top left base, he's, uh, he's lost this game, I think. That might sound a little bold, but in reality, we've got only a single mining base. I don't really count this one because it's got a single match, uh, single patch, and then this one only has three or four left. Uh, we have long distance mining coming from the orbital, just to just to get a couple more minerals, and uh, but we have two huge bases, fully saturated, fully mining, uh, and yeah, there's a drop going on right now. It's going to take out a couple of drones, but. Uh, Anything coming out of I Bleed Orange should be able to deal with that aggression. And the uh, Ultralisks Infestors that are currently being fielded by I Bleed Orange should be able to push in to some of the remaining infrastructure that Vanchin has on the field and take it down. Surprising damage is being done to this uh, top left expansion. But you can see that the Harvester counts still double. The income is four times the amount. And uh, not much is being produced by either unit, but over a thousand of both is saved by I Bleed Orange. I Bleed Orange is content to let that uh, expansion go down while he continues to push at one of the only mining places that Vanchin has. Um, it's a good, it's a good decision by that was an excellent micro right there, pulling the Infestor off that had the. Uh, seeker missile put on it, but it, it's a good decision by both players to switch over to mainly energy using units. Infestors are very cost effective, Ravens are very cost effective. You can see three more on the way. Their auto cannons are very powerful, not as powerful as Ultralisks, which uh, 
continues to cleave through any ground-based units that Banshee can have. Banshee's continually lobbing down the Hunter-Seeker missiles, but the damage isn't really being done by the Infestors. The damage is being done by the Ultralisks. Uh, those Infestors had already spent a lot of their energy. Another attempt to take out that base by Vanshin. He succeeded in stopping all mining, but I believe Orange just sent up a large enough group to dissuade Vanshin from doing damage there. The drones are retreating down to the bottom right corner. Doesn't look like they're heading anywhere in particular. Unless they're going to go to the front lines and assist. I believe Orange was sacking this uh, base. Right now we can look at the uh, units on the ground. We have 10 Ravens, which is a very intimidating force. Ravens are very capable at uh, controlling the sky and the ground. They're pulling defense drones, they're auto turrets. Very nice, but they're not a match to the Ultralisks, which are currently ravaging the ground. And I don't think any of them have enough energy to throw down the amount of turrets that are needed to stop this aggression. And with I Bleed Orange having an economy that's strong enough to uh, continually produce units, uh, yeah, Vanshin has to GG out of the game. A little bit delayed in my opinion, but if you have a, you know, if you've got a chance, then those 10 Ravens definitely give him a chance. Uh, why not push for it? I think right here was the uh, spirit breaking moment. That's a lot of Zerglings rushing into your base. All this was going to go down, and then in short order, the rest of it. And uh, Vanshin try he decided to take the classy way out and GG before it got too ugly. Um, you know what else is classy is watching my cast, so I think you're classy. I appreciate you guys watching. I'd appreciate it if you left me a comment, if you have anything to say. And if you have a game you want me to cast, you could. PM me here or on Reddit. Uh, special thanks to I Bleed Orange, I believe, for posting this on Cast It, and I will see you guys later. I am big and scary. Bye.